Assalamualaikum to everyone. Uh, am I audible? Yes. Okay. So for sprint four, uh, this is the user story. As a cloud DevOps training engineer, I will design a complete code pipeline that will use CI/CD techniques on linked GitHub repo. And this is basically the continue part of sprint three. And the the first the first two tasks of uh, this. Uh, this sprint I did it in previous sprint, so I didn't uh, change it. So pipeline and write a build stage for code pipeline are parts of sprint three, which I did it in sprint three. And next parts are uh, I did it in sprint four. So the first I did was write gamma and beta tests for code pipeline. Basically, first I write the stages and then I write the tests, and then uh, the uh, write the unit tests. I edit the unit tests in the uh, gamma and beta stages. And after that, there were integration tests. Uh, I just made a template for integration tests so that I can use it in uh, Sprint 5 because in, in Sprint 5, we are using integration tests. And after that, we, I built a stage for code pipeline using a build step because I was having errors using uh, shell steps. So I did it using build step so that I can add roles. And after that, I wrote the rollback method for lambda <clears throat> now this is the readme and, and this is almost the uh, same i added a few uh, more things such as uh, more packages that are using in this project and also uh, how can we deploy a core pipeline you in this and there are some commands and how to bootstrap i how i bootstrap it and uh, it's here also now moving towards my code so uh, this is the uh, pipeline Let's stack. Sir, can you spend a little bit more time on the on the on the previous portion? Uh, yes. Sir. So uh, this is my readme. Uh, uh, automatic website health checker with with a feature of sending email notifications and writing alarm data in database. And this is where a hierarchy of my code is defined. What uh, such as what is app dot by is doing and which functions are using for running. Uh, what things and this is where uh, the packages are required and uh, what packages are running and these are two new packages for sprint 4 that i'm using all previous were from previous uh, sprint and this is where how we can use uh, this project as a web health app, app and below it i have added how we can use it to deploy pipeline so it's uh, pretty much same for the uh, uh, creating a virtual environment. And after that, we have to make sure some things such as, um, such as, uh, yeah, such as bootstrapping the uh, CDK to it so that we can deploy it, deploy the pipeline. So I, I did this and uh, can I move to uh, code now? Uh, yeah, below it uh, are the screenshots of uh, overall the prototype. Uh, it's okay. You can move forward now if you would like to. Okay. Uh, so uh, for the pipeline stack, I have uh, defined a, a build a source page and a build page using <coughs> over here using the code uh, build step for the build page and code pipeline source step for uh, for the source page. And I used GitHub method for uh, for actually getting my repo. GitHub repo so that I can read the code. And this is happening over here. Uh, yeah, for uh, build day, I had to define roles. So because I was having accessing, uh, uh, I mean, most of the time I was having access error. So I had to define roles over here. And I add, pass it on on build, uh, build stage, build, uh, code build step, which is defined as a code build stage up over here as in synth. So uh, these are the commands that are uh, running in code build uh, stage. And after that, there are three more stages. Yeah, after that, uh, I have defined uh, it in a pipeline. And after that, I have defined three more uh, uh, stages for it, such as beta, gamma, and production stage. And I have used three different uh, files for reading. And in all these files, the uh, three files are basically reading the same infra stack. So I have did it so that I can modify it and further if I wanted to. 
such as gamma stage and beta stage and first stage. So after that, I have uh, written a unit test uh, for this code build stage, uh, what commands are needed for a unit test and also for integration tests. And yeah, I had to add rows over here too. And after that, I have added these stages in a pipeline. And this is uh, the unit tests and uh, integration tests are added as a free stage. The, in, in post stage, I have a, uh, added manual approval step, such as approve for beta te test, gamma test, and approve for production. So now uh, I will show you the infra stack where I have done my rollback. And so first of all, I I declare define my alias over here using my uh, lambda dot alias, and also I uh, I used my lambda deployment group defined over here, and I used a linear ten percent for my deployment configuration. And what I did was inside my uh, initiation of my stack, um, I defined a lambda duration matrix and I just read it from the AWS uh, uh, namespace. And after that, I designed a lambda duration alarm. And similarly for uh, error matrix and error alarm, and similarly, I did was a lambda alias and lambda deploy group. And in lambda deploy group, I'm using those two alarms as a trigger. So what are my unit tests? And these are, uh, for integration test, I have uh, just uh, left it as it is because I will, uh, I know I will add integration test in next print. So I didn't want it to remove it. And for a uh, unit test, I have added first test as lambda permission unit test, which will, it will text, uh, test how many uh, there are uh, a AWS Lambda permission uh, uh, present inside a tab a type. Also, there is test for Lambda function, or it will count how many there are Lambda function created and how many SMS subscriptions are available right now. These are two. Also, moving towards my output. So, this is my pipeline. First stage is the source stage, then build stage, and then there is a self mutated for the pipeline. After that, it's uh, creating the assets for Lambda. And then uh, these are the stages that I defined uh, as square beta. And there is where unit you know, tests are happening. Yeah, so here, here you can see that all three files were success passed as a test. And uh, then it deployed itself. And yeah, after that, I had to approve for beta so that it can move further in gamma stage. And furthermore, in gamma stage, it's running the integration test. And because in integration test, I have added asset to is equal to, so it's running that, obviously. So after that, it's deploying itself and I had to approve it to the production stage. And when in production stage, I have further approved it so that it can it can deploy it uh, for the production point of view. And after that, I deployed it as a production point of view. Here are my matrices. There are total 14 of them. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, 18 of them. Six matrices are related to one, one stage. The here uh, are the duration matters. I have added 5000 for uh, my uh, threshold. This is the duration of my lambda of production, and this is the error uh, matters of my production lambda. And that's all for my site. Any questions? Can you show me your documentation, please? Yes, ma'am. Documentation. Uh, all right. Yeah. 
so for the documentation i added one more chapter for how to how we can use it as a code pipeline here it is i have explained by step by step which are which libraries are using it in code how am i defining the stages and at the end i have mentioned what errors you can face there is a screenshot of code pipeline and this is a link to screen code and here i have uh, mentioned which errors you can get and how good. you can avoid those errors good 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 it's well structured very good Sammy questions no i don't have any looks good yeah um, looks good um the only the only um uh insight that i have is ke jab aap demo de rahe hain to yes, you need to be very sure ke yaar aapne kya kiya hai aapne bahut acha kaam kiya hai right you need to sit straight sit straight like this ha huh. and confidently aapne present karna hai jab aap itna acha kaam karte hain to you need to be confident theek yes. hai yes or yes. your sentences your sentences should have breaks in them theek hai continuous nahi baat karni aapne ek concept bata diya hai then you need to take a break then aap dusri baat karenge then you need to take a break theek hai aap sochenge aapke yes. samne 10 log baithe hain aap google mein kaam kar rahe hain you need to be confident and you need to टॉक क्लियरली क्या आप जो बात कर रहे हैं वो सबको क्लियरली सुनाई दे रही है ठीक है यस मैम थैंक यू यू शुड बी एज आउटस्टैंडिंग प्रेजेंटिंग इज एज आउटस्टैंडिंग योर वर्क इज आपका काम बहुत अच्छा है असगर थैंक यू ठीक है यू शुड बी वेरी कॉन्फिडेंट अबाउट योरसेल्फ वेरी गुड थैंक यू वेरी मच असगर फॉर दैट हां जी समी हां आई थिंक इट्स उसामा अली इट्स योर टर्न श्योर लेट मी शेयर माय स्क्रीन Assalamualaikum Umar Wa alaikum assalam Assalamualaikum nice to see you Allah ka shukar hai kya hal hai sami aapka Allah ka shukar zabardast ji chale chale so uh, am i audible ha ji aapka and my screen is visible right yes. yes okay so let's start with the user stories so this week uh, i have written uh, the user story with respect to uh, user uh, as an admin i want to automate the update releases of my web app by deploying a multi stage pipeline and to add an automatic rollback update failures so that my app has easy frequent and safe releases okay uh, i have split this user story into four tasks Uh, so the uh, first task is write a pipeline stack uh, connected to github and add code build steps to deploy any changes in source and uh, the second task is add beta and gamma as test stages and a production stage in pipeline uh, and then finally the uh, uh, third task we have add different tests to validate our whole, your whole code in both beta and gamma stages and the final one is add an automatic rollback uh to web help lambda in case of taking more than 10 seconds to invoke so these are the four tasks uh let me go to the my readme so this is actually the updated version of previous readme uh i have omitted uh, some uh, many uh, some of the things because it was quite lengthy so it is starting with file hierarchy i am explaining uh, how many files i have in my project and what each of this file is containing uh and then finally i can tell you that how you can set up your environment to deploy this project uh in this case i have added a new command uh, cdk bootstrap uh, because uh, previously we were not having uh, uh, more than one stacks in our app so now we have uh, more than one stacks and we need we need to define regions uh, that in which regions we have to define uh, our stack so for this we have to bootstrap our region first so that it can have resources and can uh, bear our deploy so i have explained uh, i have put uh, the whole uh, cdk bootstrap command uh, how i am defining region and how you can define region by giving your account number and region and your qualifier unique flag and then finally you can deploy your stack by particularly giving your stack name because you have two stacks this time so now uh, i explained uh, the modules uh, overall used in the project uh, the new module is uh, uh, cdk.pipelines which i am using to create my pipeline 
and finally i explain uh, results uh, and there are some useful commands so is it uh, okay to uh, move to the code now ji it's okay go ahead okay thank you so let's start with pipeline stack so we are having a new stack in our code now uh, i have written uh, sama pipeline stack over here so it is starting with uh, basically roles as uh, asgar mentioned and everyone else was having uh, permissions errors so i wasn't having this uh, role statement and defining these policies before uh, but uh, i uh, added these uh, roles later so the uh, first step in the state of pipeline is that you have to connect your source to uh, to your uh, uh, deploy so i am uh, connecting github to my uh, uh, github as a source uh, to my deploy uh by giving all the necessary fields and my uh, credentials uh, which i have added in uh, aws secret manager and then i am giving uh, the necessary commands uh, that is needed to run this project uh, uh these are the list of command uh, that needed to run this uh, project uh, including uh, uh, output directory and role statement obviously and finally i am telling uh, it to deploy my uh, code pipeline <clears throat> so the next i am adding uh, <clears throat> different test stages uh, and i am telling it uh, to where uh, you have to deploy it in which region you have to deploy it, these stages uh, these are beta gamma and production stages uh, and uh, i have mentioned uh, these unit test uh, of uh, these different type of unit test uh, here uh, that needed to be run in these stages so i define uh, them over here and then finally i add these stages uh, with these tests in both beta and gamma stages and uh, i give a uh, manual approval step required for uh, after every test stage so that we can uh, view our test stages and manually approve that our code is ready to go to the next stage so this was uh, about uh, pipeline stack so let's move to how i have uh, written uh, so first let's move to how i have written uh, the rollback code so i just create an additional alarm that is duration alarm using my previous function which i have written in set alarm uh, we can uh, view over here using the same function uh, i i created an alarm uh, and then finally i created uh, an alias of my web help lambda to uh, keep track of my versions of uh, lambda and then finally i add a lambda deployment group and give this duration alarm as an alarm parameter in this a deployment group so that it can uh, revoke to the previous version uh, whenever an alarm triggers <clears throat> so this was about uh, my rollback so let's see how i am writing uh, my test so i have actually write uh, three unit tests uh, one uh, for beta stage uh, two for beta stage and one for gamma stage uh, this is for gamma stage i have written uh, dynamo db i am checking actually dynamo db permission that whether we have a particular dynamo db permissions to uh, write to our table so uh, this uh, might this is my test which is verifying uh, the permissions and uh, <clears throat> let me show you this is my uh, the lambda test which is actually uh, verifying the lambda property uh, the first one is actually counting my lambda so right now i have two lambdas in uh, my app uh, and this is verifying the, uh, the number of lambdas and finally i am testing the time out that how much time out uh, my lambda has so if it is greater than 10 it is going to pass but if it is less than 10 it is going to fail because we need time uh, to invoke lambda so these are my all about my test code and uh, any any question from code uh, so uh, uh, if not i will be moved to pipeline okay so this uh, this is my pipeline uh, where source is successful build is successful uh, and my pipeline is updating and in beta stage uh, i have i am testing uh, these unit tests so we can check uh, out over here that our both tests are passing so So over here, yes. 
you can see uh, that uh, the first uh, uh, unit test db uh, which uh, in which i am verifying the dynamo db permissions are uh, is passed successfully and uh, i also added a, a test in my gamma stage so yes over here so you can verify our uh, two tests are also passed over here so let's go back uh, you can see over here that i am uh, actually uh, giving a manual approval after each test stage or uh, in beta as well as in gamma uh, but there is no manual approval in production stage. So if it is deployed in production stage, uh, it will only be deployed in production stage after both test stages will be given manual approval. So let's move to my matrices. So there are my matrices uh, and for each stage, there are different matrices. Uh, these all are my matrices. Uh, we can uh, verify by clicking over here that I have given uh, that 10 uh, 10000 millisecond these are actually 10000 millisecond invocation time that if invocation time uh, increases uh, greater than 10 second this alarm will trigger so uh, rest of the alarms are also here we can verify so don't uh, uh, i will move to the documentation uh, for sprint 4 so i have uh, added the uh, step by step uh, <clears throat> documentation to follow uh, if you want to uh, produce the same results uh, and uh, at the Amma, end, we, cannot see it. we cannot see your documentation if you're showing it. I don't know. Okay, 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 okay. Let me share again. It is actually in separate. Okay. Just starting from here, sprint four. Is it visible now? Yes. Okay. So I have added the step by step uh, to produce the same results which I am producing uh, and added the code snippets. Uh, and explaining how uh, everything is happening in code snippet, these code snippets, uh, what these code snippets are making uh, to the deployment. And uh, finally, I uh, added some challenges. What are the errors I faced and how I uh, tackled them and how I resolved them. So this was uh, about my documentation and this was all about my presentation. Uh, any question? Uh, Osama, can I have a look at your code, please? Sure. Uh, you want to see pipeline uh, code? Uh, which yes, uh, which code yes, you... yes. The latest pipeline code, pipeline stack. Yes, yes. Over here, starting from here. Yeah, got it. Thank you. Any question? Any other question? Oh, thank you, Osama. I don't have anything. Okay, should I stop sharing? Yeah, it's okay. You can stop. Um, I think Rizwan, it's your turn. Rizwan, it's your turn. Yeah. For the course, have I audible? Yeah. Okay. Uh, for the post build, uh, the task you were supposed to do was to create a code pipeline with multiple stages that deploys the web caller function that we have been developing in the last previous in the previous sprints. And that code pipeline also got to have uh, some tests, and it should also feature some lambda rail back function in the infrastructure. So this whole task has been divided into the form. Uh, this whole user story has been divided into the following task. Uh, first, uh, as we have to deploy the infrastructure, uh, so I have made the changes which I actually made to the infrastructure first. 
so for that i have to uh, for that i have added the lambda duration metric and its corresponding alarm then i have created a lambda alias and uh, and i have provided the rule back configuration after that i move on to the pipeline because at this point my stack is ready and i can deploy it using the pipeline so for for pipeline uh, I first i build uh, first i build the code pipeline with the uh, source and then stages and i check whether source and then stages were working properly and after that i define the data stage of the pipeline and added you know, the integration test to it and after after uh, at this point i have just defined what the data stages contain as my data, I have to find uh, what data stages can, would contain. After that, I have added that stage to the code pipeline. Uh, in the next step, I have created a production stage and defined what production stage would consist of. And after that, I have added that production stage to the code pipeline. And finally, I am bootstrapping and deploying the pipeline. So this is the whole process of the sprint code. Uh, next, I will move on to the readme file. Uh, for the readme file, I have first given a description of what this project is doing, uh, what is uh, uh, that we are actually requiring a code pipeline with data and production stages, and what is happening in those data and production stages. After that, I have described the files in the projects, what each of the files in the project is doing. Uh, after that, I move on to setting up the project, how you can set up the project. In this directory, you have to go and then you have to activate your virtual environment and then you have to install those all those requirements. And after that, uh, you have to, in this case, you have to actually push your code to the GitHub repository you have connected to. And finally, uh, and when you are done pushing the code to the repository, you can just bootstrap your project and deploy the code pipeline. And for verifying the results, uh, you can uh, go to the code pipeline and check whether each stage is working properly or not. And now I will first move on to the code pipeline because I think that visually seeing the code pipeline would be much better than first diving into the code. So my code pipeline consider, uh, consists of a source stage. Then we have a build stage. After that, I uh, this is an adjusted update pipeline. Portion, access portion, then comes the data stage. And in case of data stage, I, uh, I have I be in here. I am deploying the stack, and after the stack has been deployed, I am uh, after the stack has been deployed, I am performing unit integration tests on it. Uh, post unit integration tests are being performed in this log. And after I'm done with the data stage, I move on to the production stage. And for production stage, I have. Uh, in the production stage, I have first uh, uh, used the manual approval. So the user has to actually click here and give the manual approval. Then your production stage will start. And after the user has done that, the production stage would deploy the same infrastructure which we have deployed in the data stage. And we would have uh, the whole production stage done by that. Now I will move on to the code. In the code, I will first move on to the pipeline. Uh, pipeline set, uh, I don't think anything new is here in pipeline set. I have an already stripe, I have a build stage, then uh, uh, the next thing stage, then your data stage and the production stage. And uh, this is the, all the pipeline which I want to describe. Then for the, I will move on to the unit test. For unit test, I have performed the test which just checks uh, whether we have two lambda functions in our uh, stack like we are like we supposed to have. And uh, we do have that, so these tests are passed. And as for integration tests, I have made two of these in which I am actually checking whether uh, the get availability and get latency uh, functions are working properly or not. So for get latency test, I am checking whether the latency value which is which it is providing is greater than zero. Uh, if it is the test pass, and for get availability, I am actually comparing the result of get availability function 
with with uh, with checking the availability of some website so that if that website is available and get availability is saying it is available then it means that get availability function is working correctly uh yeah one thing i have to mention that as ma'am pointed out last week that i have not automated uh, i was using separate files for creating buckets and tables and i have now automated all that uh, the automation has been done so that when you let's say you want to create a bucket so what will happen is that uh, it will uh, uh, it will take the name of the bucket from constant file and check whether that bucket already exists. If it already exists, then it will check whether the particular file which we are trying to obtain in it is already there. If it is already already there, then it will do nothing. As we already as at this point we have got the bucket and the file in it. And if it does not, then it will upload the file. Or and if the bucket doesn't exist, then it will create the bucket. So this whole process has been automated. As for deploying it in pipeline, I just ran out of time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use all these three files, automate bucket, automate table, and automate topic. I will use them in the three stage of my data of my data stage. So I, what I would be doing in the three stage of data stage is that I would be just running all these three files in the three stage. So the running these three files in the three stage would just create a bucket for me, a table for me, and a topic. For me and subscribe to the topic for me and in this case i don't need to move on to the function portion where i make these into functions and call them into a code i can just uh, keep them in file format and just call them in my three stage of my data set as for documentation uh, i'm sorry of doing this actually part there because in my documentation I just uh, write what errors I got and how I resolved them. So uh, I have written 78 errors, which uh, as we had a lot of errors in Python, but all of them boiled down to six or seven basic errors. And I have written what for the error, how I resolved it in my documentation. Any questions? So, so Rizwan, we didn't see any documentation. You did you did you write something or? It's just this single page because in my documentation, I am just documenting what were the errors and how I resolved it. It's okay, show it to us. It's okay, show us whatever you have. Okay. Oh, oh, oh I thought the screen was for sorry, I will show it. Is it visible now? Yeah, it's visible. Okay. Okay, so you have a list of um, issues faced and the resolution for them. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any questions, uh, Aisha or Omar? Otherwise, we can move on. Thank you, Rizwan, uh, for incorporating the comments that I had last time. Uh, it looks good. But uh baki pir hum and me comments dikte hai uh sabka. Uh Osama, I forgot. Kidrage Osama. Osama, I forgot. Uh beautiful code. That's how the code should be written. Beautifully written code. And um to apka code bohata chata or outstanding user stories. That's exactly how user stories should be written. Aapki kya ap kon hai, apne kya kam karna hai, or uski kya output hogi. right so very good very well done uh, thank, you so much. Hai. thank you very much Rizwan things look good thank you for that please do complete your documentation I think that is the only thing that is outstanding thank you very much thank you very much we can move on to Mubashir Allah All right, is my screen visible? Yes. yes. All right. Uh, as a DevOps engineer, I would like to create a multi-stage pipeline in one region, <coughs> CICD, 
so that the team only needs to push code for deployment and it will verify code using tests, alarm, and manual approval before changing production code. Right, so um, here are the steps I've defined for this. You create a GitHub connections as source for pipeline. And I didn't use the GitHub link because that's, uh, that's not the recommended approach. Uh, and we'll go into how I did it. Next part was uh, bootstrapping. Third part was creating the pipeline with stages. Fourth part was creating metric alarms for the lambdas. And um, then there was a part for uh, adding the rollback and last part was adding the tests. Right. So with that done, let's move on towards the readme file. So I edited a Sprint 3's readme file. Uh, I give it a new uh, heading. I tell them, what the files you should focus on. This is pretty much the same structure as last time, except you know I had the new files in there. And as for environment, because now we are doing CDK deploy, uh, there needs to be changes. I mentioned how the GitHub connection happens. Uh, the way it happens is that in the CLI, I type a command. When that command runs, I get an ARN. I save that value. And then I um, go to the console and uh, do the connection it saves the app on my GitHub. And after that, uh, I no longer will have to do this part again. I don't have to save stuff in the secret manager at all. So just uh, run this command and go to the console and approve it. And then just use the ARN, ARN value to do the connection. Um, moving forward then, it's simply doing bootstrap. Uh, since, uh, yeah, so you have to use the newer version of the bootstrap and uh, you have to edit the JSON file. All of that has been very clearly documented. I've mentioned the stuff here again, just because these were the more important steps. And the documentation is a lot of other stuff that would be distracting. So, you know, it serves as a quick lookup for me. And uh, you can bootstrap easily to another area. You just simply have to uh, edit this part. And you can add more parts, uh, add more uh, environments in one line as well. Yeah, so then here I tell them to like get push and deploy. And that's pretty much uh, it for this. So um, let's move on to the code now. Right. So this is InfraStack. It's pretty much like, the exact same code as last time, except code deploy is now added as a function. I tried to add the code deploy part to pipeline stage because I liked, uh, it It would make more logical sense to have that, uh, but it cannot run there. It needs to be under a stack. So either it would be defined in pipeline.stack or infra stack. Uh, I can define it in pipeline because I need the Lambda and it was already available here. So um, for the time being, this is where I've defined the code deploy. And it's, it's pretty straightforward. So the metric I'm using, and I got this idea from the book I read, uh, which is that for lambdas, usually you wanna check the error metric, right? The error metric is uh, when you get the function call, if it's an error, it will note that down. So this is the error metric I went for. Things like duration, CPU usage, uh, those make, so duration does make sense for lambda as well, but something like CPU usage is uh, better for EC2 instances. So this is how you just like, um, um, this is how you just write the code the metric name, new space, and dimension map. Here you just specify the Lambda function name because this will be specific to the Lambda function we wrote, right? So you get the metric and then you uh, create an alarm. Uh, this is also straightforward. Uh, nothing specific here that I would like to mention. And yeah, then you create an alias the ID, the name, the name is compulsory. I, I try to avoid it, but you get an error, you need to give it. And the version and here, so the version is simply lambda.current version. Every time uh, a new version of Lambda exists, uh, it will update this by itself. And then AVS code deploy Lambda deployment group. You give it the ID, you give it the lice and you give it the alarm. So you can give more alarms here as well if you want. All right, so InfraStack only had this change in it and it's good to go. So now let's move towards pipeline, which is the more important code. So uh, 
pipeline is again a stack. So um, that's what you inherit. Uh, you define a shell step. So the shell step, uh, so usually uh, there's a source part to it and there's a build part to it. So the source part is like, where is your code, right? Since ours is on GitHub, this is a connection I do. I tell them the repo name, tell them the branch, which is main, and then the connection ARN. This is the same RN we created using the CLI command. So you can see I don't have to authenticate at all. And then this is the commands because you know you got to build it. So you, you inst install ABSCDK, the latest version. You move to the right directory. Um, I upgrade pip. Uh, I installed requirements.txt uh, because I had Lambda in my, I had a request file in my Lambda, uh, which Lambda depends on. Uh, I put that there as well. You could have added this as additional inputs. I didn't have to do it in commands, but I, I did it like why add that as well. And then CDK synth. This was also an important step, primary output directory. Uh, you have to tell where CDK out needs to be. I, I faced an error when I didn't do that. So this is this shell step, right? Now let's go to the pipeline code. So you, uh, you, you call code pipeline, give it the ID and give it the shell step. And then you add stages to it, right? So um, here comes the part where you could have defined waves and added stuff there, or you could just add stages and um, uh, enter the stacks in each stage with different actions. So I add two stages for this print, which is the beta stage and the prod stage. I only do approval for the production and I dedicate the previous stage for testing. So uh, I've commented out testing because uh, it runs here, but when I run it in the cloud, it gives me an error that uh, PyTest does not exist. So I'll have to figure out what that's all about. And as you can see, the environment is something you can like specify uh, if you want to deploy to another, um, say a region. You could also do an account uh, that makes things a bit more complicated. Uh, so, okay, uh, let's, let's go through this. What add stage takes is a stage. So in our case, um, stage is going to be uh, like another class where that uh, inherits stage. And in that you can just add the uh, infra stack. So the stage is where the stacks are defined. And in a particular stage, you can have many stacks. So yeah. The beta and the prod stage. So I'm going to add um, a post stage for doing the tests and then the pre manual approval. Yeah, I think that's enough for the code. Let's go through the documentation. Did I don't write unit uh, test? More question? Did you write yeah. specific tests as well? Yeah, I wrote, I wrote a unit test as well. Uh, this is very basic because I know it wasn't running. Wanted to see if this ran before I uh, added more. Mm -hmm. uh, this runs locally, but uh, it's, it's giving me an error in the cloud. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's, let's first look at the, yeah. So you can see um, it runs. I ran it uh, when we started. <clears throat> yeah, so there's a source stage, it builds. It's update supply and self mutating. I, I really just need to push my code. Uh, and it, it even if I make changes to the pipeline itself, I just need to push it. Everything else will be done for me. Whether I make changes to the code or to the pipeline, I do not have to delete the pipeline. I never had to delete it. I never faced the error the my friends faced. And here in the beta stage, I had defined the, um, the unit tests, but I've removed it for the demo purposes. And here you can see, uh, because there was a manual approval, uh, it's waiting for me to approve it. Once I've given it a green light, will um, the prod stage work? So this will now run. And as this runs, let's look at the documentation. So this time I did documentation is that uh, I did everything as I went along. So I started with one thing. Uh, I wrote the link for that, uh, the whole thought process of where I went from where it's all documented here. And this time I didn't write the errors uh, at the end. I wrote them as I received them, right? 
So I've even added the GitHub connection thing. Right, so each snippet, uh, each link is like relevant and you know, what a person would need. If they wanted to um, like uh, redo this sprint, they would just need to go through the document. So like uh, I first tried to run this bootstrap command, uh, but I get an error that, uh, yeah, I, I kind of get different kinds of errors that there's a length limit to, uh, yeah, so first time I bootstrapped, I did it without the qualifier and it worked perfectly fine. Uh, then uh, I had to do it with qualifiers because you can't have more than one bootstrap stack in a particular environment. Uh, if you have more than one, then you need to have qualifiers. Uh, the thing about the CLI command is that you need to give it a new name. So this was an error no one had uh, no one had realized that we were all writing to the same stack because the default name uh, was a toolkit, CDK toolkit, right? Uh, so uh, once uh, I bootstrapped properly, uh, that was it. I never faced issues with pipeline. And I think if people faced issues, it was because of bootstrap. So bootstrap has a bit of the particularities as well. It needs to be in lowercase and the maximum limit for the name is like 10. Yeah, so then, you know, other uh, like changing in the JSON files, uh, that sort of thing. You have to change the qualifier here. Um, like this is the wrong one. Uh, yeah, I asked the dev group for stuff as well. No question, we cannot hear you, or at least I cannot. I'm not saying anything. Okay. Yeah, pretty much it. So I just document uh, the steps as I go along. Okay. Wonderful documentation, Mubashir. Very good. Thank you. Uh, can I have a look at your code, please? Jahan pe aapne, uh, metric errors and alarm errors hai in the stack, yes. Sure. Stack. Uh -huh. Yes, yeah, so that will be in infra stack. Yeah. yeah. Where where is the metric itself? It's right here. Metric errors. Metric. This is the metric that you have defined. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Right. Uh -huh. This is this is defined for us. Some uh, metrics are defined for us by lamp uh, by AVS itself. Errors, duration. These are the metrics that are defined for us. Right. Right. Hmm. Take care. Very well done. Any other questions? <coughs> I don't have any. Uh, I just go to the, the pipeline code. Jo aapka hai. All right. Okay. Uh, aapka unit test mein there was error. Wo kaam nahi kara, right? Yes, sir. I'm getting the error that PyTest does not exist. वो आपने जो स्टेप किए ना पिछले शेल स्टेप में जिसमें आप सीडी टू मुबशिरुल्लाह स्प्रिंट फोर जा रहे हैं तो यू हैव टू डू दैट हियर एज़ वेल सो um so one of the uh, documentations i followed on nine was like you can have an input step within a shell step right यहां पे जैसे यहां पे शेल स्टेप है ना hmm. इसके इनपुट में एक और शेल स्टेप आ सकता है सो व्हाट आई डिड वाज ये सिंथ मैंने आई एंटर्ड दिस सिंथ and then I, I did another command. So you can, since you can have another shell step in a shell step, uh, okay. sounds confusing, right? Uh, it so yeah, since May, it should be doing these, all these steps. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay. I removed that and tried the manual, this approach as well. Mm. And I still got the error. So I'll see, I'll see what exactly is wrong with it. Okay. Could be a trivial. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay, so in that case, let's move on to Saira. Sorry, is my screen visible? Yes. Uh, so let's start with the user stories. Um, 
as part of sprint 4 i will make a ci cd pipeline for my lambda function with beta uh, gamma and production stages with unit and integration tests which uh, detect changes from my github repo and deploy them automatically uh, so for uh, tasks for this sprint i have created uh, five tasks first, first task is create an empty ci cd pipeline using aws cdk and uh, then uh, write some unit and integration tests for beta stage and then add them, uh, these tests in beta stage and uh, uh, then applic add application in product production stage and add manual approval stage as uh, gamma stage. I have done these two, uh, these two tasks. I could not do um, the other, other tasks. Uh, I could not uh, find time for doing that, I'll uh, try to do that, complete these three in my uh, weekend. So uh, let's move to README. I did, I couldn't write need README and documentation as well, but I uh, just updated the um, uh, my, uh, the uh, my, um, README that we get with CDK project uh, template. Uh, I have added uh, extra step about bootstrap in this template uh, the, um, the i was having an error about bootstrapping uh, because i was just bootstrapping uh, with qualifier name and it was bootstrapping the uh, uh, default cdk toolkit and it was messing with everyone's pipeline so i had to uh, bootstrap uh, with my uh, with the um, uh, toolkit with my uh, for myself i gave uh, uh, I gave a uh, different name for my CDK toolkit to resolve that error. Now uh, let's move to code. Mm, this, uh, this is the stack where I have defined my pipeline and uh, uh, just uh, I have defined source artifacts and uh, cloud assembly artifacts. Then I have defined a CDK pipeline and as a source section, I have passed GitHub source section and uh, for action and which is GitHub source. And then uh, art, uh, I'm giving output to source artifact I had defined earlier. And then uh, in auth, uh, auth token, I am giving my uh, secret. I was having uh, error uh, in connecting my, uh, I was having error uh, in connection, GitHub connection uh, that I solved by passing this JSON field value. It is optional, but uh, my code was not working without it. Without it. And then I just pass the uh, uh, repository information, branch information, and then the infections. Uh, I just added uh, production stage, but uh, its name is beta stage at this point. I need to change that. And in this stage, I'm just creating the, um, in this stage, in this stage, I'm just creating the object of my stack that, uh, that I was, uh, uh, I made in uh, Spring 3. So uh, I couldn't, uh, I uh, wrote uh, unit tests, but I couldn't add them because I'm having errors in uh, executing them. And uh, that's it. Uh, I only could add uh, the production stage in my pipeline. So this is my pipeline and uh, I was having errors in GitHub connections. Ma'am, I'm out, um, are you? Yes, are so uh, I was uh, having errors in GitHub connection that I solved with JSON uh, field. And then um, I was having errors in update pipeline as well because my uh, I uh, forgot to update my code in um, GitHub and it was uh, a clash between updated uh, names and uh, previous names. And then uh, it was uh, simple. I, uh, it, uh, I, could, I didn't have any errors in uh, production stage. Mm, that's it. I couldn't make documentation and read me. I didn't find time for that. Okay, so do you guys have any questions, Omar or Isha? Uh... No, I don't. Just one comment. 
वो आपकी पाइप लाइन में जो है वो थर्टीन मिनट अगो हुआ, हुआ था अपडेट तो यू जस्ट कम्प्लीटेड इन ऑफ टाइम नो सर आई मैंने रात को चलाई थी उसके बाद तो मैंने कुछ भी नहीं किया क्योंकि 13 13 मिनट्स अगो आ रहा है पता नहीं मैंने क्या किया पर मैंने रात को चलाई थी अभी तो मैंने कुछ भी नहीं किया अभी मेरे में हिम्मत नहीं है कुछ करने की बस मैं इधर वो अपडेट कर रही थी रीडमी शायद इसकी वजह से हो गया हां शायद वो ये मैं चीज में अपडेट कर रही थी तो शायद इसकी वजह से हो गया हां इसको आपने पुश किया होगा तो इसलिए हो गया होगा अपडेट राइट यस सर ठीक है वैसे वैसे ऐसा होता है कि मैंने रात को तकरीबन 1 बजे कुछ अपनी पाइपलाइन में चेंजिंग की और वो मेरी पूरी पाइपलाइन क्रैश कर गई <laughs> इसके बाद मुझे था कि अब मैं कैसे प्रेजेंट करूंगा सुबह लेकिन अल्हम्दुलिल्लाह वो ठीक हो गई सर और मेरा ऐसा इशू नहीं है जब भी मैं कुछ अपडेट करूं ना तो मेरी पाइपलाइन क्रैश नहीं होती वो चलती है कभी नहीं अभी तक तो नहीं ठीक है ओके अच्छा जी ओके जी आई थिंक इट्स फहीम स्टर्न ना करें अहमद 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 लीव इट अस्सलाम वालेकुम मैं स्क्रीन दे दूंगा हां जी Uh, so in this event, uh, I will use you that as an automation engineer, I am assigned to create a multi-stage pipeline having beta or gamma and production stage using CDK, and to deploy the web crawler in that region. Also, I have to automate rollback to the last bit uh, if operational or metric alarms are uh, metrics are an alarm. I have to write unit and integration tests to make the crawler reliable and accurate before converting to the production stage. Uh, for this user story i have made four tasks uh, first task was create the pipeline stack with the beta stage for this i have created a secret key from aws secret manager uh, then inside pipeline i have specified my github repo uh, with that uh, secret key and then i have typed all the necessary commands to install the uh, to deploy the stack uh, then i have added a beta stage in the pipeline then i have bootstrap the environment and deployed the pipeline Uh, next i have added uh, the uh, next to, uh, task was to uh, create a production stage uh, and with the manual approval step uh, next uh, i just wrote integration and uh, unit integ- integration test in a separate file and then test them and then i have added them into the beta stage after that i have automated the roll back to the last bit if the matrix are in alarm state i have measured uh, i have taken two matrix uh, duration and invocation Uh, and i am uh, passing them and creating alarms for them if uh, alarm tri- uh, and then i have created an alias of the lambda function and uh, if alarm triggers then i am uh, rolling back to the last bit of the uh, lambda uh, so you can see my code uh, read me file can you hear me we can hear you but we don't see the read me file yet now now we can okay uh, i am inside fame and uh, i have sprint 1 2 3 4 and read me file here uh, here i am explaining just uh, what sprint 1 is doing then i have extended that to web crawler and then uh, write it, wrote the logs of the alarm to the ammo db table and in this sprint i have created a multi stage uh, pipeline uh, inside sprint folder i have uh, different folders this is for bucket and inside infra i have three uh, my stacks and then i have unit test integration test and post my lambda functions this is the my read me file of uh, this sprint uh, i started with a uh, with objective that was multi stage pipeline with unit integration test now these are the important files to consider Uh, and these are the basic uh, main features what our pipeline is doing uh, i have used python 3 and aws cdk with github and by reading this uh, code explanation 
you can get an idea what uh, code is doing what each and every file is doing uh, in installation it's pretty much same uh, like sprint 3 but uh, i have just added uh, one thing uh, cdk uh, bootstrap with with a qualifier and a toolkit name uh, i was having errors when i was not specifying this toolkit uh, uh, stack name because we were working in the same uh, environment and say, using same account and these are the some useful commands for it inside infra i have uh, uh, first of all i have created this stage infra stage i have just instantiated my previous stack infra stack name uh, this thing i have inst instantiated this into infra stage uh, then i have created this pipeline i have imported all the important modules and libraries uh, after that inside my pipeline first of all i have specified the source of the code my github repo and uh, uh, the branch uh, with the secret key and a json field uh, after that i have uh, created some of the policies uh, some of the roles uh, that i will i am using uh, in code build step code shell step was not working for me so i uh, i have to define the these policies uh, and roles after that i have defined my pipe, uh, pipeline i have specified my id i have given the source and then all the roles uh, that i have just defined then i am passing all the commands uh, that will uh, deploy the stack uh, and i am specifying primary output directory and that is cdk dot out uh, after this i am creating the pipeline uh, pipeline name is in constants file i am getting uh, name from that and then i have defined the beta stage in the uh, same region uh, with this id then i have defined uh, uh, production stage within the same region after that i have write uh, i wrote uh, unit test uh, and uh, commands to install them i am also passing roles uh, because uh, to be on the safe side then i have uh, written integration test uh, this is a basic test at the moment i have not written anything in unit uh, integration test but it is working uh, fine and then i have added a beta stage uh, in the pre I have, I'm just verifying unit and integration test, uh, then a manual approval of code review status, uh, then in pipeline uh, a manual approval of uh, to production stage. Uh, inside my uh, unit test, I'm checking that uh, uh, this is the test for my S3 bucket. Uh, this is the name of my S3 bucket where URLs uh, exist. So I'm checking that the bucket exists uh, this bucket exists and this bucket has the data of urls so i am verifying that uh, inside my uh, test lambda function i have some more tests um, first of all i am testing that my lambda functions are two because i have defined sns lambda function and web health lambda function uh, i am verifying this then i am verifying that i have created an alias of the lambda function uh, that will be rolled back to the last bit if operational alarms will be in uh, operational metrics will be in alarm. Uh, then I am checking the topic that I have subscribed. Uh, then I have a test for code deploy uh, that is rolling back just. Uh, and then I am checking the test permissions uh, that uh, effect is allowed. I mean, uh, uh, SNS Lambda has the permissions to uh, write the logs of the into the Dynamo DB table, uh, and then its effect and policies. And these are my unit test, integration test, uh, inside integration test. At the moment, I'm just uh, checking result two is good to do nothing else. It is working uh, perfectly fine. So after this, uh, what I did is inside infra stack. And this is uh, pretty much same as uh, previous print. I have just added this thing. First of all, I am specifying the dimensions. I am getting the name of the web health lambda function name and passing in the dimension. I have created two alarms, a delay alarm and invocation alarm using this function. Uh, I'm just reading the data of duration and invocation uh, every five minutes, uh, checking that every five minutes lambda is invoked or not. Then I'm uh, defining the delay alarm and uh, here thresh I have specified threshold two because 
I just noted that uh, for one hour, uh, the reading were about 1.9, so that I specified there too. And invocation, uh, it is just like same, I'm just reading the invocation uh, and specifying invocation, uh, metric invocation. Here I'm getting uh, these two alarms and then I have created an alias of current version. I was having an error uh, because the ID of both uh, when in beta and production state were same. So I have specified here the ID, uh, this thing that I'm getting from the infra stack. And then I've used code deploy uh, and specified the alarms. Uh, inside code deploy, I have not, I have used this default uh, develop, deployment config that is generated 10% uh, five minutes. Uh, what it is doing is it is shifting 10% uh, of the traffic to the new uh, Lambda alias, and then it is checking for five minutes. If it doesn't uh, get any alarm, then it will shift uh, all the traffic. Uh, this is from my code and uh, inside my pipeline, this is the source. And then I have build upgrade pipeline. This is the assets. It might be too because uh, I have separate folders for SNS Lambda and uh, uh, Web Lambda. And inside beta stage, first of all, I'm checking uh, integration and unit test. If they succeeded, then I'm checking uh, code approval, code review status, that is manual. And before going to production stage, uh, I have also specified a manual approval step. Now, these are the my metric alarms for four of the websites that I've specified and they are uh, working. And uh, this is the, uh, Lambda function, I think. Uh, no, no, this is the uh, alarm. This is alarm that I've delay alarm. I've, I've specified threshold two values are one for nine. I don't know why it is inverted, but it is working fine. And inside uh, code deploy, uh, you can check. Uh, this is my uh, Lambda for beta stage and it gets rolled back. I don't know when and why. And uh, these are the uh, entries when alarm get triggered, it's just writing the data into the uh, table. Uh, I have, I've done one thing that I am not uh, uh, using my email because I was getting a lot of emails. So I just removed it uh, here inside there. I've just commented it. So uh, I'm just verifying from the DynamoDB table. And uh, this is the, my, uh, documentation uh, inside sprint four i uh, started with the main objective and then i started implementation uh, from uh, aws secret manager i wrote written the code then i was having errors with bootstrap uh, inside cdk devop group uh, me and Vibashir were asking uh, about bootstrapping they recommended us two things that uh, you can go uh, you can bootstrap uh, with the default settings uh, you don't need to specify custom qualifiers and tool gates and it will work. And the other uh, thing was we can, we have to define custom qualifiers and tool gates. So some of my fellows define custom qualifiers and tool gates. Uh, so that's why I also went with the same procedure. Then I bootstrap my code. I was having error in uh, uh, building the connection uh, between GitHub and uh, uh, my pipeline. I resolved it. Uh, my secret uh, manage, uh, key was not working, so I changed it and regenerated it. Uh, and then I was having with defining roles, uh, then Glib, uh, my fellow from CDK Dev, he said me that uh, uh, you are deleting something outside from cloud configuration, so you don't need to do it. Uh, so he told me that don't delete anything outside from cloud formation. Uh, so to restart the deployment, if I get error, I just need to delete my bootstrap stack and uh, nothing else. Uh, so I don't need to uh, define roles for deleting anything else. Uh, then I then uh, bootstrapping with same qualifier, I was getting errors. He recommended me to not to change the stack name, not to change the qualifier. Then I followed those things and uh, move on. And then I was having errors with code shell step. Then I have defined uh, these policies and it will it work perfectly fine. And uh, inside uh, beta stage, I was having clashes between resources. Uh, like here, you can see my beta stage has created AWS SNS Prime email service, but that was uh, uh, already 
created by beta stage and my next stage, uh, stage was creating it twice so i just removed the uh, topic name from the code and it worked perfectly fine uh, then i wrote unit and integration test it was not working fine because here you can see uh, this thing in it dot pyc uh, when i deleted this thing uh, because it, with uh, with this folder i was not able to import aws cdk import code it was a simple test but not working then i deleted this folder and it worked well and uh, this is my pipeline uh, if you want to read about unit test uh, you, you have to go on through these links uh, to automate the rollback i have specified the links and uh, it's that it's working these are some of the features and my uh, screenshot my, from my guidelines that's all Wonderful documentation theme. <clears throat> um, I don't have any questions. Aisha, do you have any or Roman? No, I don't have any questions. Very well written post. Thank you. Um, and very good documentation. Thank you for that. Are you sure you're saying something? You're, you're muted. I think. <laughs> Thank you very much, Fahim. Uh, very good documentation and uh, clean code. Thank you. Thank you. Saad, it's your turn. एक चीज है जो आप सब ने मिस कर दी है. अभी देखते हैं सारा presentations खत्म हो जाने दे आप. जी Saad, please. एक टाइम की बात तो नहीं कर रहे इट्स ऑलरेडी देयर बाय डिफॉल्ट कौन सा बेक टाइम कौन सा टाइम बेक 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 टाइम इट्स देयर बाय डिफॉल्ट यस मैम इट्स देयर ठीक है ठीक है ठीक है आप कह रहे हैं तो होगा डेफिनेटली <clears throat> okay um so i uh, for this sprint i basically uh, so i basically wrote this uh, user story so as a skip you uh, devops training i need a multi stage pipeline for my web crawler along with testing environments so that i can monitor its health and roll back to a safe version uh, version in case any alarms are triggered now uh, for the task uh, i basically i have uh, i defined these tasks so i have at first i had created a file pipeline and this is tag.py containing the source stage and for this i had to connect it to my github repo then i had i had to update it by adding a build stage in that uh, pipeline underscore stack file and finally uh, and then i had to Uh, create a pipeline underscore stage dot py file which basically calls my infra stack. Then I had to add the uh, uh, beta and prod stages. I had to modify my pipeline stack file with beta and prod stages. Then I had to create a test dot py file that uh, tests both the lambda handlers using pytest and moto. I uh, then I had to create another test dot py file that tests the template generated by CDK Sin and. Uh, for day 3 i had create operational alarms for lambda resource and then i had to add code deploy in infra stack so that uh, you can have uh, automatic rollbacks when an operational alarm is triggered so these are the uh, seven tasks that i have defined for this uh, sprint eight tasks sorry So this is the readme uh, designing a code pipeline for continuous uh, delivery the project is about setting up a code pipeline multiple stages and testing environments so the motivation basically they basically shows that i can use uh, aws uh, cdk python to for creating pipelines and tests using pytest uh, this uh, the text slash frameworks used are basically python aws cdk aws sdk and uh, moto 
uh, the features basically i'll start i'll just you uh, this basically contains everything from sprint 1 to sprint uh, 4 is over here so i'll just uh, move on to sprint 4 it contains a pipeline uh, uh, containing two stages beta and prod contains the test file for lambdas um, contains uh, the operational arms on lambda contains a code deploy portion that creates a lambda deployment group for the installation i've just uh, i kept it uh, kept it uh, as uh, I have written for the previous sprints that you can visit the AWS CD installation link after installing and simply fork this repository. Usage is basically similar. Uh, I haven't added the CDK bootstrap part over here, which I should uh, do it. I'll do it after the demo. And I basically added a useful command that CDK bootstrap command over here where I've removed my account ID and stuff and I've just uh, replaced it with this uh, account ID label. And I've added this the, the command that uh, you can use. It's very helpful in this case. And you have to run it only once. So now moving on to my code. So basically, I'll start off with the pipeline stack file. So the pipeline stack file is basically, uh, uh, it, can, it basically contains the source, build, beta, and prod stages. Uh, at first, I... Uh, when I started writing this code, I basically, uh, at first I wrote the source stage. So this is basically connecting to my GitHub repo. It is accessing my uh, personal token from the AWS secrets manager. Then I designed the build step, uh, build stage using shell step, but that never really worked for me as uh, during the build stage, the pipeline gave me an error that uh, it cannot access my S that Lambda cannot uh, get uh, the constants from my S3 bucket. So instead of using shell step, I commented this portion, I used a code build step. So for code build step, I basically had to create a role. So uh, with shell step, you cannot create a role, but you can modify stuff using the code, uh, using uh, code build step. This so is the role that I've created. I basically created this role and at the service principles, obviously code build or uh, code build. And these are some of the policies that I added. So I gave it a full access to CloudWatch, S3, DynamoDB, basically the stuff that we are using. I had to give this SSM full access as well because it was giving me some errors, which I never really knew why they were there. Uh, why it was giving this for probably it was for probably because we were updating to the same CDK toolkit in the beginning. I had to then define these other things as well. Uh, I had to add these other policies to it as well. And finally, I had this uh, I had this list of commands. So basically, you can see a lot of ls dash al. I had added this for my own so that I can actually see what is going on and can debug stuff so that I know how it is uh, flowing. So I added the CDK context clear to just clear all the context values if there are any and uh, fine. And then this last command for build stage is CCDK sim. The primary output directory is uh, the CDK dot out directory. The path is given over here. Finally, then I moved up uh, my basically pipeline. Uh, I added a beta state, I added a broad state. I commented the gamma state because for now, uh, I don't think we need the gamma state. So uh, this is how I added the state, the beta state. Basically, uh, I've added two uh, tests uh, in the, uh, before it starts to prepare for the beta stage and before it starts to deploy, I've actually added these two uh, tests. So this one is our Lambda test shell and which basically uh, it runs successfully using shell step, no permission errors uh, over here. So it basically executes whatever tests are I have defined in my Lambda folder. And then I've added a code. I had to use a code build step over here because I was basically accessing some, uh, so it basically gave me permission errors uh, for that S3 stuff. And so I, instead of using shell step, I used a code build step over here. And uh, for this, I am basically testing my PyTest test underscore template uh, folder, whatever the tests are in that folder. Then I added another uh, final stage that basically is my broad stage and I simply added a manual approval step over here. So then uh, unless or until I don't approve, it won't move. Uh, it won't uh, basically up update that st uh, stack if it's already present or uh, create a new one. Now moving forward, I'll uh, show you the test. 
So this is basically the, te the test underscore template. So what it does is that I, I have actually defined a conf test file, which PyTest uses. So in this file, I have, uh, I have uh, uh, created that template, which uh, uh, CloudFormation creates. Uh, so, and I return that template uh, simply uh, uh, to my other file. So I find this pytest.fixture over here. It basically uh, helps in, I don't have to, uh, it basically uh, helps uh, in passing these uh, variables on to other uh, functions and stuff that are basically using the pytest. When I start uh, uh, testing using pytest, it basically checks whatever uh, fixtures that I have used and it basically passes this to the functions that I have uh, that need it. So, uh, and uh, this is the file test under so CDK dot uh, template. So I simply uh, did import PyTest and I passed that template thing that I have shown you earlier. And uh, this basically is using uh, whatever that this template, this is basically a function, whatever this is returning, it is basically using that. I, have, I am checking the length of the functions, uh, the number of alarms, they are basically 12 alarms, uh, 10 for the, uh, websites and two for the uh, dynamic db duration and uh, lambda and the web matrix lambda uh, duration and then i have uh, this um, i also added something like event scheduling period i wanted to check whether it's this or not so i have also added this test as well i added a number of sns subscriptions test as well i have added a number of sns topics you can you know you can keep on extending as you can add as many tests as you want as the number of tests you can find from the st uh, static that uh, template uh, for the other test that i showed you that saw the lambda uh, test shell so basically i have uh, defined a conf test for it as well uh, using moto i have uh, created aws credentials uh, these are basically aws mock aws credentials and the it, it never uses the AWS resources for testing. It just creates uh, some resources in the code and it, the, uh, the code thinks that it's actually using AWS, but it's not using AWS resources. So this, uh, I passed these uh, credentials similarly to some of the functions I created these, these resources, created a mock DynamoDB Boto3 resource, a CloudWatch Boto3 resource, uh, some S3 client resources, S3 uh, resource itself, I added this create bucket. So it never actually creates the bucket in the AWS. It's just, there's sort of, a, there's a, it just, uh, the code thinks that it has created a bucket, but it never really has in uh, the actual uh, uh, AWS that we are, the system that we use. So, um, ingrained report matrix function for the DynamoDB. I just had this DynamoDB so table, this mock table that I also created for uh, to use and the tests are basically over in the other file. So basically test my Lambda function. So the web matrix Lambda, the only thing that it is doing is that it is pushing matrix to CloudWatch. So I want to see that whether that uh, if I push uh, pass some environment variables to my Lambda function that I've called the Lambda handler over here. And I want to test this response uh, by with the one that I'm getting from CloudWatch. So I uh, that mock resource that I created, I actually, after passing some environment variables to my Lambda handler, my Lambda handler would run and it would save something in the uh, CloudWatch. Now, what I am doing is that I am getting those, the stuff that it saved and I'm matching that stuff. So if it's same, I'm matching some of the things over there. And if it's same, then uh, it's okay. Everything is running fine. So this is basically search response, response metadata, HTTP status code. I checked the status code 200, then that's a success. I also checked the ID that I'm basically, I created this stuff over here. I've only used one. So Google and I've named it as uh, Google latency while queuing it. And I know that uh, uh, the uh, Lambda would also have it in that, uh, have it in that way. So basically I've, this response meta that metric data result zero id google latency and now i'll show you the dynamo db stuff so in here here i've created this event this is that sns message created a sample message i've uh, uh, passed this this is a table name which is in the actual table name in the database it's just the mock table name it's just uh, temp something uh, it's not that actual table name in the database 
So I pass this uh, over here to the Lambda handler and I get the, and then I have created this time with underscore table dot get underscore item. I created this. And there, uh, this is actually present over there. I basically uh, pass this key to get the, the message. So this is what I check. I actually check the HTTP status post echoed, and then I check whatever the message uh, that whatever my uh, the event uh, that I've passed to whatever that that records uh, the records that over are here, and I check it against the item that if whether my dynamo my lambda handler is actually added to my mock resource or not. So I actually verify this over here. Now moving on to the infra stack file. Okay, so this is the infra stack file. The only thing new over here is that I've added aliases and some uh, web metric lambda, some uh, alarms on duration. So for both the lambda, so this is the alias. Uh, I have uh, basically in this alias, I've added uh, this construct ID. I just uh, and this construct underscore ID, this basically contains my stage name, like beta stage, broad stage is basically coming over here. And um, I have the alias name is current, the version is, this is basically the Lambda handler. And um, this is the, the dot current underscore version, this is an attribute. Uh, and basically it signs the current version to it. Um, then I did this alarm. I actually wanted to use uh, something else for over here, but it never. I was testing this in the last moment, like about uh, before coming to the uh, session uh, this morning. I was testing something different, but it wasn't working out for me. So I just commented that part out. So this is basically um, the failure alarm, the cloud watch dot alarm. I've set the metric, the, uh, the namespace is AWS slash Lambda, the function name, I'm basically passing it from over here. And statistic is average, doesn't really matter right now since uh, I'm only using it on, I'm basically comparing single data points. So it's probably the same, it, will, it won't matter. Then I have a de uh, Lambda deployment group. Over here, I have actually added my alias over here which is a reference to my Lambda and um, the deployment configuration linear 10% every two minutes. It means that shifts the traffic, 10% of the traffic every two minutes. There are several different configurations that we can use, but uh, for now, for in our case, it never, it doesn't really matter what we use because we aren't really doing any um, complex stuff that way it does matter. So alarms, we pass it as a list and um, I've actually passed this a single alarm over here. Similarly, I've added, I have this DynamoDB failure alarm and this deployment group for DynamoDB. I actually wanted to uh, use this function that I created, uh, create operational alarms lambda. I wanted to use the metric underscore duration uh, uh, method given in the AWS CDK lambda, uh, uh, the, that function uh, class basically has a metric underscore duration method. So I actually wanted to use that but the error that I got was that it, uh, the, and I wanted to actually pass that alarm list back to my uh, um, constructor so that I can actually uh, pass it uh, over here to code deploy. But uh, I was getting some errors in the build state, so I reverted back and I, I commented this part so that I can look it up later on. Now I will uh, show you the documentation. Okay, so this is
so what i have done uh, this uh, documentation for this print is uh, uh, much better than the previous one so what i've done is i've added my user story over here i've split this I divided this print into a couple of tasks and similarly these are all the tasks that are mentioned over there in the github uh, project so this is the first or github repos i've added an overview how to do it some screenshots showing what you have to do and uh, the issues that um, someone can face over here is that you make sure that you are in the right region. So if, uh, you can have different, you can save your secrets in different regions. And so you need to make sure that the code that you're deploying in the region that where you go, where you are deploying your code and where some and where your secrets are placed are they are basically the same region. And this personal access token expired, I actually faced this error. And so I had to gen uh, generate another uh, token. Uh, and I had to uh, update my secrets manager. So then I have a create a file pipeline stack. So it basically, well, I have uh, added all the steps needed to do this. I have I've linked it to the functions, the, uh, the AWS CDK do do documentation as well. When I'm, whenever I'm going through a certain function, I've linked it to that documentation and I've defined uh, whatever these, uh, the parameters are given over here, you know, you know, over here. Some issues faced, make sure your JSON underscore field name is correct. Uh, this is important as the secrets manager will use this key to locate your personal access token. Make sure your secret and the stack are in the same. Then again, this is uh, important. And uh, add the build stage in environment stand overview. This is basically that same overview. Uh, I'm uh, actually I did this command and I'm explaining it, uh, what the different parameters are. The issues faced, access denied errors when running the build stage. Uh, this, uh, I actually face this, uh, the solution is to use code build step instead of shell step because code build step allows you to uh, define custom policies. The first step, then I explained how to use code build step, um, uh, how then you can create your role. I've added that uh, documentation link over here and how you can use code build step. I have the documentation link and I've explained it uh, above as well. And I've uh, so I've referred it to what I've explained for shell step. Create a pipeline with a stage dot file uh, dot file no errors over here. It's, it's pretty simple. Then uh, add, add beta and prod stages in the pipeline and so stack. Um, so uh, the I've added uh, explained over here how to add a stage. It's uh, pretty simple. I've added explained how to uh, basically shown the code over here. I linked the documentation. Uh, AWS issues face during deployment often face the STS assume role error. So this is basically what all of us were facing. And the solution was that the, the, the cause was that um, we were actually updating the same CDK toolkit when doing bootstrap. So every time someone else did a bootstrap, they changed the, uh, the, uh, the, the qualifier name. So that is why one time uh, it's, it works for me and the other time it wasn't working for me. So the solution was to uh, just change the name for your toolkit and then everything works fine. I never really had to delete the pipeline and all everything uh, completely and upload it again. So in this mind, I face no errors. Now I created a test.py file, basically linked to some a couple of articles. I've also uploaded these on Perusal. I uploaded them on Monday on Perusal. And um, I've basically used these, these articles, uh, helped a lot in trying to understand how that Moto uh, stuff works. And code deploy in front of stack uh, automatic rollbacks. Uh, so the code deploy, I uh, actually ex explained how to create an alias and that Lambda deployment group as well. And uh, the failure alarms. Uh, the issue that I faced was that I uh, was uh, passing a string as a function name over here. So I, uh, this was uh, an error in my code and um, I fixed it by uh, using that attribute function underscore name of the class uh, function in AWS uh, underscore Lambda package. Now the pipeline. So I made a couple of changes in the last minute. And uh, uh, so it has basically uh, uh, 
uh, the source succeeded, um, the build succeeded, update pipeline succeeded, the assets find the beta, the test succeeded, and um, this was also okay. The problem over here is that the, that um, I have to um, uh, delete my lambda function, and then I have to uh, rerun this uh, using uh, release change button over here. Then it will work fine. So it has basically it never the recent changes that I made uh, it never really accepted those changes and it rolled back to the previous version which was working fine. So similar case for this one as well. So the code is working. I can show you the alarms and stuff. Uh, but the thing is that something I added recently is isn't working, and uh, for that to work, I have to delete my lambda functions and then I have to rerun it. That's okay, so um, um, everything looks great. Um, this is basically an alarm. Uh, so so the thing is that uh, I actually added a very low threshold, and I wanted to update that. And in doing and updating that, I have added something else also in my stack due to which I am getting that error. So uh, that update that I am trying to fix right now will uh, fix this threshold, and it will bring it up to round. So something over here. This is basically my web matrix lambda failure alarm. The threshold is very low. Okay, Saad. So, look, everything looks really great. Um, really good work. The only feedback I have for you is to keep your um, your demo shorter. It was quite long. But then other than that, everything looked great. Uh, any uh, questions? Nay, thank you very much, Saad. Uh, good documentation, good code. Thank you. So I'll stop sharing. Okay, we can move on to the last one. That should be Shahriyad. Mm. Is my screen visible? Yes. So these are the user. This is the user story I created for this print. I want to create a code pipeline with at least two stages and add unit test to it to check if code is working fine and deploy it to one region and add rollback to the previous version. So uh, I created four tasks for this uh, sprint. Task one was to create and deploy a pipeline in one region, and then task two was to, was to add beta stage and unit tests to it. Task three was to add a production stage and update the pipeline. And task four was to create alarm and uh, in the on the lambda function and add rollback on this alarm. Moving towards the readme file, there are some updates which I made in the description about the code pipeline and then the services use that. Uh, uh, I'm further using two more services, code deploy and uh, code pipeline, and then I have explained them down here how these services are used uh, used and the stages I have created in code pipeline and why I'm using code deploy and checking and testing. I have also updated that how you can check your code pipeline in the code pipeline in, on the GUI of AWS. Moving towards the code, uh, this is my pipeline stack code in which I'm First, uh, sourcing with so where my code actually exists, where to direct changes from, which is a GitHub repository. And this, uh, I have uh, the uh, GitHub credentials are given through Secrets Manager. And this JSON file is basically uh, important because it, uh, I'm passing the key to that uh, SS token uh, without it, it was giving errors in deploying. These are the roles which I have defined to. to pass to code build step in synthesizing and it also I have also passed the commands which will be useful to run this project. Uh, and then I've just created the pipeline using this uh, source and synth. And then I have added the beta stage in a US East 2 region and I've added unit tests to it. And these are the commands which will uh, be needed to run the unit test. And I've also passed the rows to it. Without it, I was getting SS errors. And these are this is the where I have added the beta stage to my pipeline, and I have given that uh, with the, before running the beta stage, I want to do the unit testing, and then I have added the production stage, 
and in production scene, I have added the manual approval step that after the beta stage has run, I want to manually approve for the production stage to begin. And then moving towards the app.py then I have heard now before we were uh, uh, calling infra stack from here. Now we are just calling pipeline stack from here. And then uh, moving towards the infra stack here, there is a, a few changes in this function, create alarms function, which is called from the self function. And in this, we are just creating, a, <clears throat> a first time uh, getting the duration metric from the AWS Lambda namespace and uh, then creating a failure alarm on it uh, and uh, the threshold i set for it was is 3000 milliseconds and that if uh, it is more than 3000 i want to alarm to go in in alarm state then i'm creating the alias for the current version i've used the dot uh, uh, the dot current version method of uh, the lambda and added alias uh, of the live version to it and then I'm creating uh, using Lambda deployment group for to add rollback with this alias and on this figure. Uh, this is basically the second alarm I was at, trying to add for errors, but uh, it was giving me errors in the deployment stage of beta stage. So for uh, the demo purposes, I have commented this out for now, and I will look up to it adding this alarm later. Then moving towards the test, this is the first test uh, and the unit test that I'm done to check the number of Lambda functions in which my uh, case there are two. So I'm checking if there are actually two in the template of the stack from which I'm getting this, uh, the, I've defined that the resource type is a Lambda function. Then I want to add this into my functions and then check how many functions have been added. And the second test is on the alarms that how many alarms do I have? It's the same approach is made from this template. First I uh, get the template of the stack and then I uh, checking the type of, uh, if there are AWS CloudWatch alarm, I want to add them into alarms and then check uh, how many alarms are there. In my case, there were five alarms as there were two URLs. So uh, one availability and one latency for each and one for the duration metric. So there are five alarms for it. Um, Moving towards the output now. This is my pipeline. Uh, here you can see the source was successful and then the build stage was successful. And then it updates uh, one every push. The assets are successful. And then this is a beta state. And here the unit test, it uh, passes the unit test and it deploys here. And then uh, after giving the manual approval to it, the production stage also runs and it's successful. Going towards the alarms, these are the alarms that have been created for me. These are the test stage alarms you can see, and this is the production stage alarms. And you can see this is for the duration I have set. And it's getting data and sometimes it goes in alarm. This is for the duration on the web health lambda function. Uh, moving towards the documentation. This is my documentation for port pipelining. Uh, first, I define the task, and then I have uh, done the procedural thing. Uh, I have uh, approached it uh, using the procedural thing that what, what I have done and what faced uh, as along the errors I faced. So, first, I defined the port pipeline, uh, changed the bootstrap qualified name. So, I was having problems in creating the pipeline and what were the key notes I have added down from this. Then I moved to the code build step and it permissions to get through, but still the error existed. And then basically the JSON field was important to give access to the secrets management credentials of GitHub, which deployed my pipeline. But then I was having errors. So how these were so first error, then I changed these to, and then the error was updated or a different error popped up. So how I approached to change those errors. This is all documented. And as the process was successful, I added screenshot that after this changes, uh, this has been successful. And then I did writing a test case for beta stage. So 
Similarly, another popped up, then the changes I made, and then it was successful. And then in the deploying of beta stage, I faced error. These were the errors. And then what was the solution? I had to basically I wasn't able to create uh, resources in the beta stage, so I had to add IDs to make it unique uh, every time uh, more resources were created. So then it was successful as you can see beta stage also. And then there was adding the unit test in beta stage. This is how it done. Then I faced errors in it and how uh, I was successful that I wasn't really passing the roles to the uh, unit test and I used code build and passed roles to the unit test too. And then this was successful too. And then uh, there is about creating alarms on the web health lambda function. And this was created successfully in the first attempt. And then adding the production stage. This was done successfully in the first step too. Then I added another unit test to count the number of alarms. This was done easily. But then uh, this is the error now I'm facing was with uh, adding another alarm of web alerta. I wanted to add errors alarm. Currently, I was still facing issues with it. So, any questions? I don't have any questions. Uh, Aisha or Ramar, do you have any questions? Uh, no questions from my side. Okay, in that case, we have we're done with all the demos. So good work, everyone. Um, I would say Harbande ka court pretty much chal raha tha. That was good to see. Um, some of you didn't have any documentation. I would encourage you to complete that. Some of you had very detailed detailed detail documentation. That was really good to see as well. Which no court commented nii ya comments nii they don't make sense. Try to work towards writing clearly commented code. Some people didn't have modular code. So, so basically mm -hmm. try to try to make code modular, try to make sure that it's not one big function doing everything, but you have sub functions. Um, user stories format correct mm -hmm. Um, basically just have us have, there's a simple found format, right? As a skip queue engineer, I have this task so that I, so that's something something that format is not being followed by everybody some people are following it some people are not aisha or omar do you guys have any comments ajini i think you have covered it all almost comments aap log bhul gaye code ko karna it's very very important while you're coding saath saath comments us pe add kare i think that is one thing that uh, everybody almost is lacking other than this, you guys have become pros on GitHub. You have user stories, you have written tasks, you have written tasks, and you have written code, you have written code, you have written documentation, you have written code, 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 you have written Yeah, I also think uh, demos were really good. The baki chizhe hai, Aisha or Samir mentioned ki hai, se, I mean, wo minor kuch chizhe hai, lekin baki, you know, it was, uh, I would say, a treat to watch. Yeah, overall, it's really, really good. Videos on Kalyab, Jolo Greg. What else? We are done with the with this. Uh, 
I want to discuss the emails. Sami, is there anything else, or should I start? Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Ji. Thank you. Um, I've gone through your emails. Very interesting. अच्छी लिखी हैं सबने बहुत. लेकिन there's a lot of room for improvement, right? To write professional emails is of course an art. an art that we want you guys to master theek hai ji usme kuch links hain jo main aapse <coughs> sorry share karti hu share karungi usme exactly if you go through those three you your set i mean koi itni badi science to hai nahi ye to lekin ye hai ki kuch maine comments likhe the wo main aap logon se share kar leti hu ek to ye ki ji aap logon ne long paragraphs nahi likhne it should be succinct it to be to the point aap logon ne kaha hai ki ji mujhe uh, आपने थैंक यू ईमेल करी है तो आपने कहा कि जी रिस्पेक्टेड या डियर आप अपनी ईमेल स्टार्ट करेंगे आपका जो ईमेल का सब्जेक्ट होना चाहिए क्रिस्प एंड क्लियर ठीक है जी जो द बॉडी ऑफ योर ईमेल शुड बी शुड नॉट बी टू लॉन्ग बस ये नहीं है कि बंदा पढ़ता चला जाए तो गुम हो जाए उसके अंदर टू लाइन्स टू लाइन्स से थैंक यू बात खत्म हो गई ठीक है जी अच्छा जी स्पेलिंग मिस्टेक्स हैं बहुत सो की ईमेल में बहुत स्पेलिंग मिस्टेक्स हैं ठीक है सो मेक श्योर व्हेन यू राइट योर ईमेल प्लीज गो थ्रू इट बिकॉज इट्स कंसीडर्ड नॉट गुड कि अगर आप लोग ईमेल लिख रहे हैं उसके अंदर मिस्टेक्स एंड दैट मींस यू डेंट फाइंड द टाइम टू री रीड इट राइट सो इट रियली कम्स ऑन द फैक्ट यार आप दूसरे बंदे को कितना रिस्पेक्ट करते हैं जिसको आप ईमेल लिख रहे हैं ठीक है जी स्पेशली जब आप अपने किसी इंस्ट्रक्टर को लिख रहे हैं या किसी Uh, किसी कंपनी के डायरेक्टर को लिख रहे हैं तो आप दो तीन दो तीन दफा तो उसको ईमेल को पढ़ेंगे कि आपको पता चले कि यार इसका फ्लो ठीक है मैंने जो पहले बात करनी थी वो मैंने बाद में तो नहीं कर ली जो मैंने बाद में बात करनी थी मैं पहले तो नहीं कर ली एक ईमेल मेल आई है जिसपे स्किप क्यू के लिए अप्लाई करना है और स्किप क्यू के लिए पहले पैराग्राफ में लिखा है कि आई एम वर्किंग एज दिस और दूसरे पैराग्राफ में लिखा है आई एम वर्किंग विद सम अदर कंपनी एज दिस सो मेक श्योर वेन यू वेन यू राइट दैट ई इट शुड मेक सेंस राइट अच्छा जी सेंटेंस स्ट्रक्चर इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वेन यू वेन यू राइटिंग यू शुड मेक श्योर अगेन री रीड इट ताकि आपको पता चले कि यार ये मैंने इसमें तीन सेंटेंसेस तो नहीं है मेक एज शॉर्ट सेंटेंसेस एज पॉसिबल अब आपकी ईमेल शुड हैव अ पर्सनल टच पर्सनल टच होना चाहिए लेकिन वो फॉर्मल भी होनी चाहिए ठीक है एक फ्रेंड्स को ईमेल लिखना डिफरेंट है आप अपने किसी सुपेरियर को लिख रहे हैं वो डिफरेंट है कोई आप किसी कंपनी के डायरेक्टर को लिख रहे हैं वो डिफरेंट है राइट सो इट शुड हैव अ पर्सनल टच आप उसको बताएं बात लेकिन फॉर्मल रह के बताएं आप जब भी अपने आप ईमेल लिख रहे हैं यू शुड बी हम्बल इट्स गुड टू बी हम्बल राइट बट एज आई ऑलवेज से यू आर योर ओन पी आर एजेंट आपने अपने आप को खुद प्रमोट करना है दुनिया में कोई भी आपको नहीं प्रमोट करेगा ठीक है जी आपने बताना है कि यार मेरी ये अचीवमेंट्स हैं ये मैंने काम किए हैं और ये बताना जरूरी है और रिस्पेक्टफुली बताना जरूरी है इंस्टेड के ये कह दिया जाए कि माई सीवियर इज अटैच यू कैन गो थ्रू माई प्रोजेक्ट Nobody has time to to open your your CV and go through your projects. You need to tell ki ji, ye project ki hai. It is very relevant to what you're doing. I think I'll be a great asset to your company. But in addition to that, I think I'm going to learn a lot from your company as well. ठीक है. Be direct. Be very uh, precise and uh, use as little sentences as possible. ठीक है जी. अच्छा जी. और excessive use of adjectives ना करें. Please refrain from excessive use of adjectives. Your wise, kind words. Never say wise, kind words, right? बहुत ज़्यादा adjectives use नहीं करते. To the point, बात करें. Uh, and be assertive. ठीक है जी. ए अगर email में आप ये लिख रहे हैं कि I was wondering if I could get a position in your organization. No. Be assertive. आप उनको बताएं कि जी मेरे ये projects हैं. Or I think I'll be a great asset for you guys. राइट एंड इट वुड बी लाइक वाइज मैं भी आप लोगों से बहुत लंबी करूंगा लेकिन आप मतलब आप उनको बताएं कि मैं बड़ी चीज हूं मैं ये नहीं हूं कि मुझे कुछ आता नहीं है मैं स्किप क्यू से करके आया हूं आप मुझे लाइट ना ले ठीक है जी सो बी एसर्टिव आप उनको बता रहे हैं आप उनको बताएं कि जी मैंने स्किप क्यू से काम करके आया हूं मैं और यू नीड टू टेल वाई द कंपनी शुड हाई यू एग्जैक्टली वट आई वॉज जस्ट सेंग राइट यू नीड टू टेल दैम कि यार आपकी क्या वैल्यू है अगर आप सिर्फ ये लिख देंगे कि जी आई वाज वंडरिंग आपके पास जगह है तो मैं करना चाह रहा हूँ काम नहीं 
आप कहेंगे जी आप जगह बनाए मैं मैंने सुना है और मेरे ख्याल में मैं बड़ा बेस्ट फिट हूँ और ये और आई थिंक यू शुड गिव मी अ चांस एंड आई प्रूव माई वर्थ टू यू मतलब इस तरह करके आप अपनी ई मेल लिखे ठीक है जी Uh, और हाँ एक ये बात है कि ये ज्यादातर जो ईमेल्स है ना वो आप लोग इस तरह लिख रहे हैं कि आप लोग कह रहे हैं कि आई न्यू वंस दैट आई मैंने जब आपका पढ़ा तो मैंने ये देखा कि जी मैं अवेल कर सकती ये अपॉर्चुनिटी आई और फिर मैंने सोचा कि मैं इसको अवेल कर लेता हूँ क्योंकि ये मेरी पर्सनल टेक्निकल ग्रोथ के लिए बहुत अच्छा है सो यू डोंट टेल देम वट इज गुड फॉर यू यू नीड टू टेल देम वाई यू वर्किंग विद देम विल बी गुड फॉर देम बिकॉज इन द एंड इट्स ऑल बिजनेस राइट So they need to know यार वो आपको क्यों हायर करें कौन सी ऐसी बड़ी चीती बात है आप में कि वो और सौ लोगों को छोड़ के आपको हायर करेंगे ठीक है जी सो मेक श्योर के फ्रॉम नाउ ऑन जो आप ई मेल्स लिखे उसमें ये सारी चीजें इंक्लूडेड हो ठीक है ये मैं डॉट पॉइंट सारे आपके उसमें प्रोजल में भी डाल दूंगी और इसमें मैंने तीन लिख्स लिखे हैं मैं आपकी मीटिंग मिनट से भी तो नहीं गो थ्रू कर सकी ईमेल से मैंने कर लिया है ई मेल्स में अब नेक्स्ट टाइम आप लोगों ने वो जो मैं आपको दो दो तीन लिंक्स दे रही हूँ ऑनलाइन Simple. I've just googled it, and most importantly, Google is your best friend. Always, right? आप कोई ईमेल लिख भी रहे हैं तो एक दफा सर्च कर लें करने में क्या हर्च है, right? एक दफा कर लें कि अच्छा यार ये लोग इस तरह लिखते हैं, हाँ ये स्ट्रक्चर ठीक है. Now you write it on your own words. क्योंकि whatever that you're doing वो दुनिया ने कभी ना कभी कर ही लिया होगा. ऐसी कोई चीज नहीं है जो बिल्कुल ही नहीं है और कभी किसी ने नहीं एक तो ये है कि आप गूगल की पावर को अंडरस्टैंड करें और उसको यूज करें टू योर एडवांटेज सो दैट्स अबाउट ऑल जो मैंने आपको लिंक्स अपलोड कर रही हूँ उसमें उन्होंने मल्टीपल टेम्पलेट्स दिए हैं आपने थैंक यू की ईमेल करनी है वो आपको कैसे करनी चाहिए आपने आ, आ, अपना आ, कोई जॉब लेने के इंटरव्यू वो करनी ई करनी है वो कैसे करनी चाहिए अगर आप फॉलो अप करने के लिए ई मेल करें वो कैसे करनी चाहिए सो गो थ्रू ऑल ऑफ दोस आई थिंक दिटी स्ट्रेट फॉर्ड वॉन्स यू हैव एन आइडिया कि ये कैसे करते हैं तो फ्रॉम नेक्स्ट टाइम ऑनवर्ड्स नेक्स्ट मंडे को हम आपको एक और टास्क देंगे जिसमें आपने एक और ई करनी होगी बट मेक श्योर के यू टेक ऑल ऑफ दोज चेक बॉक्सेस ओके जो कि हम इसमें मैंशन करेंगे मीटिंग मिनट्स की भी मैंने आपको uh, एक uh, मैं वेबसाइट वेब पेज है वो मैं लिंक uh, कर दूंगी उसमें बहुत क्लियर है कि आपने अगर फॉर्मली कर रहे हैं फॉर्मल का मतलब ये होता है कि जो डॉक्यूमेंटेशन में आ जाए कंपनी की डॉक्यूमेंटेशन में आ जाए ठीक है जी जो कि बाद में ऑडिट करने के लिए यूज होती है एक होती है इनफॉर्मल मीटिंग मिनट्स जो हम सब कर रहे हैं जो कि अपने ग्रुप्स के लिए होती है राइट तो आपने वो इनफॉर्मल मीटिंग मिनट्स का सेक्शन देखना उसमें सिंपल लिखा हुआ है कि यार ये ये बातें डिस्कस हुई थी ये एक्शन आइटम्स थे इस बंदे के थे और इसने इस इस पर डिलीवर करना है सिंपल राइट उसमें कोई ऐसी बड़ी साइंस नहीं बट वंस यू नो के यार ये फॉर्मेट है और इस तरह मैंने लिखना है और आप दो तीन दफा उसको प्रैक्टिस कर लोगे तो यू गाइस विल बी गुड टू गो राइट बट ये दो चीजें हैं जो आपको आनी चाहिए ईमेल लिखना और मीटिंग मिनट्स लिखना ठीक है जी दैट वाज ऑल फ्रॉम माय साइड समी उमर नहीं आई डोंट हैव एनीथिंग आई एक्चुअली नीड टू साइन ऑफ राइट हां हां ठीक है ठीक है ठीक है थैंक यू वेरी मच वी विल सी यू ऑन द अदर साइड ऑन मंडे Uh, you guys will see me on also on Tuesday <laughs> because I'm traveling on. I'm going to be here on Monday afternoon, so I'll see. I'll try to make it on Monday, but I can't. Promise. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. I thought you were traveling on the weekend, so that's okay. We'll see you on Tuesday then. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ahmed. वो यूज कर लें जो काम आप लोगों ने नहीं किए वो कम्प्लीट कर लें क्योंकि नेक्स्ट वीक से ऑल ऑफ यू विल बी गेटिंग सम मेनी प्रोजेक्ट सो यू विल नॉट है एनी मोर नेक्स्ट वीक और द वीक दैट फॉलोज उसमें आपको छोटे छोटे हम प्रोजेक्ट दे देंगे इंडिविजुअली आप लोगों ने वो प्रोजेक्ट करके डिलीवर करने होंगे रिलेटेड टू वट यूर स्टार्टेड बट नॉट नेसेसरीलीजिंग दैट वुड बी एट दो वीक्स के बाद फिर हम वीक के बाद फिर हम आप लोगों से मिलेंगे आप लोग प्रेजेंट करेंगे जो आप लोगों ने काम किया होगा एंड फिर वील मूव ऑन टू डॉक्टर्स और जो लास्ट टू हमारे स्प्रिंट्स रह गए हैं 
वो दो हम स्प्रिंट करेंगे उसके बाद आपके मॉक इंटरव्यूज होंगे एंड आई थिंक दैट वुड बी एट क्वेश्चन क्वेरीज कॉमेंट्स तबियत खराब है हाँ ये बात तो है लेकिन ये है कि कोई बात नहीं यार तबियतें खराब होती रहती हैं कोई बात नहीं एंजॉय करने का मौका नहीं छोड़ना चाहिए जिंदगी में ठीक है जी आई थिंक ट्रिप इज ऑन उमर मेरे ख्याल में उन्होंने आपके लिए गुलबर्ग में कोई बेस्ट वेस्टर्न है होटल वो बुक किया है फॉर सैटरडे नाइट सो गो एंजॉय योर सेल्फ ठीक है एंड हैव फन मीट समी be back we might meet you guys also because we are traveling to pakistan me and dr ali as well so there might be a chance we'll be meeting you guys too let's see let's see how that is um uh, so okay anything else nothing else thank you very much for wonderful demos and uh, we'll see you guys on monday then inshallah inshallah thank you very much thank you umar take care allah hafiz khuda hafiz Allah Hafiz Allah Hafiz yeah.